This is CUNY TV, the City University of New York. I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. The New York Civil Liberties Union, a statewide organization, is one of the nation's foremost defenders of civil liberties and civil rights. Donna Lieberman, as its executive director, leads their fight in New York for justice and equality. And she's my guest today, and I'm very happy to have you. It's wonderful to be here, Ronnie. The range of issues that you guys cover basically all comes down to justice, I guess, and race, maybe. And freedom. And freedom. Yeah. So I was fascinated to read about the farm workers. Yeah. Start with them. Well, um, there's a bill pending in Albany to provide farm workers the basic protections that every working person should have, the right to organize, the right to be covered by workers' comp uh, when you get hurt on the job. Uh, the right to get a day off a week, the right to be paid for overtime, basic minimum wage, minimum wage basic protections that, that, that everybody needs and deserves. And for, for 80 years, since the New Deal gave those protections to other workers, farm workers have been excluded from, from workplace fairness. And they've been excluded as the product of a dirty deal, a compromise uh, with the Southern segregationists um, back then who, who refused to support the legislation unless farm workers were excluded. That was because back then most farm workers were black. And, yeah. and, and today, most farm workers are, are Latino. Um, and so we have Jim Crow from the 1940s uh, uh, still alive and sadly much too well in New York State today. It's time to, you know, call it a day for Jim Crow mm -hmm. and, and, and provide fairness mm -hmm. and justice for and farm And these workers. are workers that come here specifically for the farming, the season. That's right. And most, That's right. most all of them have the, red, the card they need for that temporary right. work. Right. And some of them, you know, some of them have green cards yeah. and live here, you know, um, year more, more year round. But, but, but um, the situation, when workers don't have any protection, then it's an invitation to abuse um, on the job and, and for farm workers particularly to sexual abuse and retaliation and intimidation, exploitation. It's, it's, it's a form of slavery. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and why the New York State Legislature has not pass this legislation is really beyond me. This is like, you know, it's a no-brainer. Right. And where's the problem? In the, in the Senate? Is it Republicans? Bingo. Or? It's the Senate. It's yeah. the New York State Senate, which, which refuses to move on social justice legislation. You know, the New York State Senate, you know, under, under the Republican stranglehold, which was only interrupted mm -hmm. te temporarily, <laughs> um, uh, um, you know, has done maybe one really progressive thing, which is marriage, you know, mm -hmm. but, but other than that, um, and that was important. That was an important victory for, for fairness and, mm -hmm. and, and equity and, and respect. But, but, you know, when it comes to most social justice uh, legislation, you know, they, they can't be um, uh, convinced or relied on. That is really, it's so touching also. It really gets you because the, there are children involved, it's living conditions, it's awful. That's so right. we go from that, which is a recent activity, to what I, I think is taking up a lot of your time, which is the New York City Police Department. And it's not only the police department, it's really New York City's racism in a funny way, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You know, um, I've, I, I'm, I find myself saying the NYPD has become like a cottage industry for, for the <laughs> NYCLU and for too many other mm -hmm. New Yorkers. You know, um, uh, the, the New York has experienced a drop in crime over the past 20 years, um, but it's a drop in crime that has been experienced by big cities all over the country. 
Um, and it's a drop in crime that really started with the Dinkins administration. And, and, and David Dinkins doesn't get the credit that he deserves for his uh, criminal justice policies. But uh, Commissioner Kelly and the mayor have convinced, they've kind of bamboozled New Yorkers into thinking that this out of control stop and frisk program is responsible for the drop, but it's not. And other cities have done it and have done it actually with a greater decline um, without these, these oppressive um, practices whereby every year hundreds of thousands of innocent New Yorkers, primarily New Yorkers of color who are young men, are, are stopped, detained, patted down, searched by the NYPD, and they're so innocent that they walk away in this era where, where, where the police department would arrest a, a, an open bottle of beer if they could, you know, um, they walk away without so much as a summons. And, 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 and only about one in 10 of these stops results in, in, in a summons or an arrest. It's the most inefficient, le forget about the rights involved, forget about the affronts to human dignity um, and what it does to people's lives. It's the most inefficient, ineffective program you could imagine. They claim that it's about getting guns off the streets. Baloney. You know, 0.15 percent, that's like one in, 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 in 700 of these stops, it turns up a gun. You do better with a buyback program in a church. Mm -hmm. So, 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 and, and it wreaks havoc when you hear the stories oh. of young men stopped day after day or week after week, you know, going about their business. And it's not just the, the kids with the hoodies and, 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 and um, the baggy pants, which would be inappropriate and unacceptable if it were, but it's about young men of color and across in, the board. If they could be in cars, they get them out. I, what the, what the most, I mean, what I hear from are the mothers and the, the families. I mean, they tell their kids, don't resist it, or they fear every time a child goes out that this is what's going to happen. It's a part of growing up. That's right. And, and, and as, as a parent who's raised two kids in the city, I never had to tell my son or my daughter how to survive an interaction with the police. But, but moms and dads of color, that's part of, 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 of raising a child, and that stinks. You know, people are getting sick and tired of having to tell your kids you've got rights, but don't stick up for them. You know, behavior, you, they, not, you don't have to just tell your kid to behave out in public, right, but to behave and suck it up. Turn the other cheek when you get bullied by the, the NYPD. That's entirely unacceptable in a free and egalitarian society in my city. Um, you know, New Yorkers are going to be out on the streets on June 17th, which is Father's Day, appropriately enough, to demonstrate in a silent march against the abusive, out-of-control NYPD stop-and-frisk policies. The New York Civil Liberties Union will be there. There's information on our website, nyclu.org. And I hope that all New Yorkers will join us. It's really important for everybody, for communities that are targeted by this program and for people who, who are white and don't have to suffer the consequences directly. We want our city to be a safe place and a fair place for everybody. So what do you suggest they do? Well, I think people have to start coming out, uh, for, come no, out for this yeah. demonstration. I mean, what should the police yeah. do? Oh, well, you know, community... So what, what, are the, what are the figures that they show that the stop and frisk is related to the number of people arrested or the NYPD says that we go where the crime is and and that's communities of color and people of color well you tell me how it it it's going where the crime is to stop innocent people and subject them to detentions and pat downs that's not going where the crime is that's using a blunt instrument you know community policing real community policing where the officers on the beat know who they're dealing yeah. with and 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 that that mean that that everybody not just my kid because he's white you know feels like the policeman is my friend they can go to them for help where there's building trust and this is, is, is 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 it's kind of a no-brainer but also you know 
social programs, after school programs. You know, one police officer was telling the story about how a community closed its gym and the crime rate went up. Well, duh. If you give kids, you know, activities and you and constructive activities, well, you know, they will they will Well, that's the whole budget question, isn't it? Absolutely. Early childhood education, pre-K and kindergarten deprive the after school so there's no, no programs to develop anything else. Right. But with, in a way that's falling into their trap also because it's not necessarily kids who then turn to crime that they're stopping. I mean, absolutely. Right. And and you know, how does it fit into Comstat and the reporting of the different figures? Well, Comstat has turned into a disaster for policing in New York because the police department uses Comstat to create quotas and 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 because that shows that they're what going where the it's crime the pressure is. Pressure in the precinct. They're putting pressure, and there there are a number of very well documented instances where it's clear that they they the the precinct commanders are forced to make their numbers, and they force the, the line officers to produce X number of stop and frisks and X number of collars, low level, high level, whatever. And 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 instead of the numbers, the data helping to, to, to um, uh, guide the police department. They are the driving force. Um, and, 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 you know, Ray Kelly, you know, two weeks ago, he was defending almost 700,000 stop and frisks a year. It's responsible mm. for com crime coming down. And then more recently, he says, well, we want to restore public confidence. But, we, but he has said he doesn't really want to do anything to change the program. So they're trying to, to spin uh, I think the NYPD to 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 uh, mute the criticism, but they're really not making any changes. And 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 you know, it, stop and frisk practices on the street have their counterpart in the schools. And the way the, the our education mayor with his Young Men's Initiative, you know, have have dealt with education is is horrific. You know, I appreciate that he cares about education. I appreciate that the mayor cares about young men, but he's got to be blind not to see the impact of his policies in our schools and on the streets on young people of color particularly. You know, we have a situation where a child is, is late for class, a child uh, curses an adult in school, a child um, writes on the desk and ends up in handcuffs at the precinct instead of, you know, uh, in, in, in detention or at the principal's office. It's absolutely out of control. And, and, and the, the, the city under Mayor Bloomberg has transformed NYPD's role in our schools to, to control of school discipline. And the educators are not allowed to run the show. They're not allowed to control police officers and, and metal detectors and, and, and in the schools. And it doesn't make our kids safer. So these statistics also go into the precinct's reporting? Um, they, you mean when they, in the schools? Yeah, if they no, take the kids no, 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 no. What happens at the schools, the number of, of kids who have to open their bags in order to get into school, yeah. the number of kids who are patted down in school is not part of the statistics. If it were, they would be No, I meant the when, they call a cat, when they call the police into the school and the kid gets handcuffed and taken to a precinct. If they get arrested, yeah. then, then, then those would be part of the yeah. arrest statistics. We get the data on, on, on school arrests, um, not in, the, in, in, in as, detail, as much detail as we would like, but we, the city council passed a law requiring both the police and the DOE to provide data on suspensions and arrests. And what we see is almost 2,500 arrests, mostly for, for, for low-level offenses like disorderly conduct or uh, obstructing uh, government administration, which are like the tip-offs that they're, they're, they're not, that it's baloney. Um, and, and, and why on earth are we arresting our children for being disorderly in school? Yeah, okay. And w in, the, in the stop and frisk, it's not only in neighborhoods of color. I mean, it's people of color it, get this, stopped any place. Yeah, this is about <laughs> people of color wherever they go in the yeah. city. Um, and it could be an overwhelmingly white or a totally mixed neighborhood. It's people of color, particularly young men, who are subjected to stop and frisk. And it's totally um, out of control. When Comstat first started, mm -hmm. um, wasn't it basically to see where crime was? Yes. And then to shift the 
the police officers to that precinct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It wasn't to have this race. No, it wasn't about about meeting quotas, right. uh, which which Commissioner Kelly now calls performance goals. So, <laughs> how, so how do we change that? Well, there are there are. Um, uh, Several major lawsuits. Um, there's the Center for Constitutional Rights challenge to the stop and frisk um, racial profiling and unlawful searches. There's the NYCLU uh, clean halls case, which challenges the the stop and frisk abuse in, in housing, in, in in private housing. There's the uh, uh, LDF. Um, uh, and legal aid case challenging the same program in public housing, and then there's the NYCLU case which challenged the abuses in in uh, in livery cabs, uh, where passengers were being subjected to, to to stop and frisk by virtue of participating in a safe streets uh, safe cabs program. So so there's that. There's also legislation pending before the city council. Time is long past due for an inspector general for the NYPD. They are so out of control and have provo proven so difficult to, 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 to monitor and right. oversee. You can't even get into it, can you? You can't. And, and, and they, I mean, they don't even like, you know, subpoena? Who, me? You know, I mean, the NYPD acts like, you know, they are above the law. They do that on the street, and really they thumb their nose at, at, at any kind of transparency and accountability. The NYCLU had to go to court to sue them for a database that they provided to their own hand-picked, you know, uh, a research institution, the, the Rand Corporation, which brought us the Vietnam War many years. Anyway, uh, <laughs> the rationale for the Vietnam War, and um, uh, uh, which we won. So, so um, uh, there's that bill. There's we a didn't win the Vietnam War. We oh, won the, we're, the we're, request. We're, we're, we're <laughs> the lawsuit. Thank you, Ronnie. Right, okay. Um, and there's other legislation that would require uh, police to to ha carry a card instead of inviting a a, a conflict over give me your ba badge and 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 shield number, uh, your name and shield mm -hmm. number. Um, uh, they would have to hand out their business cards. Mm -hmm. They would have to give people the equivalent of Miranda rights, telling them you have a right not to be searched if you're not suspected of a crime. Um, and, and it would also prohibit racial profiling in a more meaningful way that allows individuals to, to pursue those claims against the government. So, so there's a whole package before the city council. something about that you don't have to submit to it? Is that true? Yeah. I yeah. mean, I mean yeah. if, if, you know, what we tell people is that, that when you're in a confrontation with a police officer, when they want to pat you down, you have the right to say no. But then if they insist, you just say, I object, and you have to let them have their way with you, as it were. Um, and and um, that's, like I said, I'm, I'm sick and tired of telling teenagers, this, you know, behave thing. yourself, obey the law, but, but when it comes down to it, you know, you have to settle for, we'll sue you later. You know, it's time for the police department to, you know, get with the program that's called the United States Constitution, and it's time for the mayor to have a real young men's initiative that 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 deals with these problems. You know, before kids end up in jail, don't put start kids through the school to prison pipeline or the streets to pr prison pipeline. Our kids are good kids. There are future. Once in that pipeline, it's very it's hard so not hard. to get back in it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And we, I mean, that's what's so frustrating, isn't it? How do we ever overcome that? How do we ever see a little, the results of things? Or I, we just don't. Well, I think that, <laughs> that, you know, we need schools that respect our kids yeah. and treat them as, as our future and, and encourage them to be critical thinkers, not just fill in the blanks test takers. Um, uh, we need we need schools that encourage kids to be part of the solution when there are problems and conflicts in school, not just like, you know, handcuff them and, and, and throw them in the clink and or suspend them. Um, and, and we need, you know, we need social justice programs. We need programs that give kids constructive things to do and encourage them to play sports instead of, instead of um, just, you know, locking them up and throwing away the key. I'm just lost in thinking about the magnitude of this. What, what's the safe hallways? You said it's not only in public housing? Right, the clean hallways clean program. Hallways. You know, landlords sign, um, uh, will invite the police in to keep their buildings safe. And, and, and that's okay. But landlords, no matter how many apartments they own, 
cannot give the police permission to search people and stop them from going into the building um, uh, unless they have suspicion that they're doing something unlawful. Yet the police station themselves on certain blocks in the, in, in the Bronx where they, where they detain kids uh, for coming or going from buildings in the clean halls program. They arrest kids for being in their own courtyards. I mean, they, 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 they torment mothers, you know, all over the city um, who have to run from one window of the apartment to another as they watch their kids get near the, near, near the entrance to their own building. I mean, people can't even have visitors, you know, relatives won't come visit because they don't want to have to risk Getting, getting detained or, or patted down or arrested by the NYPD. And, and, and every one of these interactions ha carries the potential for getting Thank out you. of control. You know, and, and whether it's, you know, and, and nobody wants their kid to be Marley Graham. Yeah, and how many arrests are related to marijuana? Oh, you know, <laughs> since we have lowered the penalties for marijuana, uh, it's under a the blue, it, no, no it's, a it's, it's a violation. I mean, mere possession of a small amount of marijuana is a violation. Yet, under um, uh, Bloomberg, who I believe said he tried it and liked it, or at least he tried it, you know, cavalierly, you know, um, uh, the arrests for marijuana, misdemeanor marijuana, um, have gone up tenfold. So instead of what used to be 3,000 or 3,500 arrests, we're now heading towards actually 50,000 arrests a year for marijuana. Marijuana is an important case in point because it's one of those crimes where, where we have data going back years about who uses and sells marijuana. And who uses and sells marijuana is not overwhelmingly people of color. Most of the marijuana and most of the people who use and sell marijuana are white. But who gets arrested? We go where the crime is, right? 90% black and Latino, 90% male. And, and, and it defies, you know, sort of the, the independent kind of data. And, and there's no rational justification. Marijuana, has, marijuana use has never been linked to violence, yet, yet the Bloomberg Kelly administration is on a tear to arrest people for marijuana. And then there was, of course, the whole scandal, which has been documented um, anecdotally, that police officers were, were telling people, you know, they, they would stake out a, a place where it's being sold, and they, they would get, grab people as they were coming out. We know what you've gotten there. Pull it out, and it'll go better for you. It'll go better for you instead of being arrested for possession of a small amount as, or being getting a ticket for possession of a small amount, not in public. They get arrested for a misdemeanor because they pulled it out when the cop told them, pull it out, it'll go easier for you. Yeah, it'll get me a collar instead of just a summons. So, so, so and, and, and of course, Commissioner Kelly denied that this was happening, but he did reissue an order saying you're not supposed to do it that way. Um, of course, we're monitoring that to find out whether, yeah. in fact, anything has well, changed. Well, he, he supposedly issued some other kind of things about stop and frisk. What were they? It was kind of the same old, <coughs> same old, rehashed, reissued. There's no change, unfortunately. There's, there's um, uh, uh, reissuing the guidance that racial profiling isn't acceptable. Well, it wasn't acceptable a month ago. It's not acceptable now. Um, that's not going to change anything. What proves that there isn't racial profiling? Um, I don't think that I, if 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 there's suspicious behavior, um, uh, if there is a description of a um, somebody who has engaged in in uh, a reported crime that an individual meets, then that's that's not profiling. That's good policing. But when you just stop somebody for being on the street and black or, you know, right. or well, Latino, yeah. then, and, 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 and the, the category of stops that, that constitutes a huge percentage of the stop and frisk on the streets is furtive movements. You know, I go and say, is that a furtive movement? Does that subject, make me vulnerable for a stop and frisk? Well, if a, a you know, that's what, that's the vast you number. Mean if you mean if you pull back when you see a cop coming? 
they <laughs> think that resistance or fear, which is natural, is going to be furtive or suspicious. Well, or you put your hand in your pocket. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. if I do it, it may not be look suspicious yeah. to a police well, officer. It, but if a, if a young black kid does it, well, then that might but, very well. But, I mean, if you're not racial profiling, then it seems to be how many stop and frisk, stop and frisk were there? Six hundred thousand. Only six hundred eighty-five thousand. And what percentage is people of color? Uh, <laughs> at eighty-nine. So ninety percent. Right. So, if you stopped and frisked six, and you should stop and frisk six hundred eighty thousand. White people. Well, you know, Clyde, had <laughs> Aber know. Clyde Haberman had a column who suggested stop and frisk everybody for right, everything, exactly. you know. And, and um, uh, you know, that some people have suggested draft yeah. everybody, yeah. you know, that's a way to put right. an end to war. Yeah, right. And, and um, uh, that's Clyde's suggestion for putting an end to this <laughs> right. ridiculous out of control Absolute, stop absolutely. and frisk policy. You know, I'd rather just sort stop of it. stop it. <laughs> uh, we have, we're almost finished, but we haven't even discussed the police uh, crowd control and demonstrations and stuff. Yeah. Excessive, right? Well, you know, Commissioner Kelly has this command and control approach to demonstrations, um, and he doesn't, the police department doesn't really much like having their activities documented by journalists, either with credentials or without. And with cameras. So, and with Which cameras. Which is a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, I think what they're learning is that, you know, just as they can put everybody under surveillance uh, in this, under this new technology, um, you know, the rest of the world puts them under surveillance. and. Uh, um, whenever people are in motion, whenever people are protesting, you know, criticizing the government, it's a test of our commitment to the First Amendment. I just want to throw in one more thing, Ronnie, which Definitely. is that, that the NYCLU has an annual concert called Broadway Stands Up for Freedom, which is July 23rd this year, and it's wonderful. Tony Kushner is going to be there this year, uh -huh. and Celia Keenan-Bolger, and Julia Murney, and lots of Broadway stars come out to support, to support the you. NYCLU and our youth programs, and it's going to be really wonderful. And so they should go to? NYCLU.org for the concert, NYCLU.org slash Broadway. We have a search tool. You yeah. can search for June 17th demonstration yeah. or any of our, our Know Your Rights pamphlets, our work on reproductive rights. We cover the whole lot. I have so many other questions, but we've yeah. gone through. So thank you, Donna Lieberman, and thank God for your still passion <laughs> and commitment to this whole question of justice it's just and freedom thank you thank you ronnie <laughs>